Podcasteru. Uh, this is uh, one of the PlayStation Plus <coughs> games of December. You get it for free. Uh, oh, this is the Games and Gimmicks podcast, by the way. Um, check us out, gamesandgimmicks.com. Uh, for all of our podcast goodness, lots of stuff there. Um, different articles and things like that, too, as well. So check it out. Um, and our podcast. So we have stories, the path of destinies. So what is this game? Well, let's just play a little bit of it, just to show you. Um, it's a storybook style game. It's a story game. Um, it's a top-down game, like a lot of the PlayStation games that are pretty much offered for free these days. Um, not a lot of meat to the PlayStation Plus games. I mean, it's a you know, gaming world is varied now. Uh, there's tons of different experiences to have, um, and tons of different stuff to play in general. So, um, if you've listened to our podcast, you'll, you know, me and Eric, uh, talk about this all the time. There's a lot of different choices now, and it's kind of hard to sift through everything, even if they're offering it to you for free or as part of the, um, subscription. So, yeah, um... It's taking a little bit longer than I thought for it to start up here. <laughs> so, yeah, stories the path of destinies. From it's what beautiful I've here. Played about this thought Renato. Thus far. He was thrilled to be back um, with his old war buddy. He missed the mad rabbit. It's kind of interesting because not quite right. It it plays out like a storybook. So, you have this narrator that's detailing everything. Um and you have some basic <laughs> Hack and slash sort of gameplay style. Gameplay style. All you gotta do is run around and swipe at things and kill bad guys. So there's that. Um, there's different abilities like this hook thing that he they got early on in the game. Uh, didn't have to play very long. So you get more abilities unlocked as you beat more bad guys, and um, you can see like the environments are pretty cool in terms of the uh, style of how this game's supposed to work. Ooh, uh, you take sparky. different pickups, Thought or, not. or and what what have you to upgrade your sword, which I haven't upgraded quite yet. I've only had the, the first upgrade, which showed you how to do it. Um, and now it's just kind of playing through it a little bit. So um, the cool thing about this game, really, honestly, uh, it's pretty... I mean, the concept's kind of generic, let's be honest. This style game has been done a million times. Um... But what's kind of cool about it, uh, it seems to be that these are pretty big universes. There's lots of big open spaces and stuff for this character to roam around in. Uh, there's decent enough voice acting. Um, and the fighting's pretty simple, pretty easy thus far. And um, I, I wouldn't say this game is really much of a challenge to most people. Um, it's pretty casual. So you might find something that you enjoy about it just on that basis. Um, the really cool thing is that you get to actually have like a choose your own adventure style part of this game where you're um, picking different parts of the narrative that you'll continue through. Uh, the storybook that you saw in the beginning there kind of opens up and shows that you can choose different paths. So, um, you know, one was uh, either saving a friend or going to find some, uh, I think it was like some massive weapon to end some war. Or uh, you could um, kidnap some emperor's daughter or something like that. So you can go different paths. That, that was kind of cool. Um, but that's kind of it. So um, <laughs> I'm just going to play a little bit more and probably be silent for a little bit and just kind of play it and just, if you want to watch, watch. Who needed okay. bridges anyway? I imagine I could beat this game pretty quickly if it came down to it. Okay, so that worked maybe all the way back here. Can I go, can I go back that way? No. Um, I feel like I kind of missed something over here. Is there anything else over here? No. Alright, then. So, see, kind of simple. Overall, right? So we're gonna go down here. Logical conclusion. To the next level.
There's gonna be some bad guys coming up here soon. They're like crows thus far. As, uh, ooh, it's a uh, No Man's Sky. You gotta mine the ores. No, oh, that's the wrong game. There was something sour in the air. Like the earth had ruptured over something that had been fermenting for a very long time. I wonder what I could make with all these sword crafting materials, thought Renato. Probably a sword. S words. Renato felt wrong all over. He could feel an almost palpable sickness in the air. And if the land could have tumors, they would look like these monstrous crystals. The forest was quieter than it had been. There were insects, but few birds, if you didn't count the ravens. Renato smelled sick animals and dying ones, but no healthy ones. And getting a bad feeling about this, Renato thought. Maybe Lapina was right. Maybe they should have kidnapped Zenobia instead of coming here. As he held the radiant icosahedron, Bernardo felt queasy, like dozens of tiny worms were nibbling his insides. It wasn't healthy to be so close to the eye of a god. How could he use it? He could take it to the observatory. The scientists there could tell him how to harness its ancient power. But honestly, Bernardo ached to get away from it. He brought so the core the back with him to the farfarer. But honestly, Bernardo ached to be rid of it. Tell you what, said Lupino, I'll take it to the observatory. You attack the Imperial Outpost. The Imperial Outpost was a vital communications node. Taking it could shatter the Empire's ability to coordinate. And it would be full of secret plans and maps and maybe even rebel prisoners. It was a good target for a hero like Renardo. But what if Lupino got the core and then broke it or lost it? Or worse, was Renato yeah. ready to take that risk? Maybe it was better if he brought the core to the scientists himself. Uh, choices. Either take the core to the scientists yourself or go to this other place. I think this is the better choice because I don't I don't trust that character because he seemed kind of stupid. Like they're trying to tell us that he was stupid early on, so I don't trust him. Lapino was a touchy rabbit. Renato knew that. You're brave, I know, Renato said. But this is what I was hired to do. At least let me run ahead and warn the scientists you're coming. So Lapino was intent on being a hero, just like him. War made sensible men crazy for glory, and Lapino had never been sensible. But what was the harm? Lapino might well trip over a hornet's nest of ravens, but that was better than ravens lying in ambush, wasn't it? They finished the trip to the Nexus in silence. Renato had no sooner rescued his friend than he was putting him back in danger. All right, he finally said as he landed. I don't trust Lapino. Go. I don't, I don't trust that rabbit. Something about that rabbit, I don't know.
I'm like, wasn't that? Yeah, like, he was the guy who got caught. Yeah, I don't know. It, that's the one only interesting element about this game. Is that you get a choice in some part of the narrative, which is kind of cool. Plays like a story. Um, like a choose your own adventure. As Renato watched Lapino vanish on the horizon. Yeah, I don't know. Is it enough to stand out? Nausea building in him. He felt ill. Could his knees really be aching this much? But how could he have handed the core off to Lapino? That was a recipe for disaster. Alright, now I'm so like sure of myself that like I'm completely wrong that this is like they're gonna be like this is the wrong choice. Interrupted story time! Call it the lead raven. Now I'll never find out how it's This is a pretty easy game. I mean, overall, I haven't, more, I haven't at one time encountered something that I didn't feel like a good beat. So that's an important thing. If you want to play a game, he once met a pirate captain. He used hooks to get around his ship. What was his name again? Renato felt worse. All his joints were aching now. He'd been through beatings that felt better than this. So the core had a kind of poison that could harm you without even touching you. That's new. Well, it had power. The rebellion needed something with power. And how was this a sword wound? Well, a death by sword was sudden and fair. This was just... Squalid. A piecemeal death, like old age. Imagine if you built a house on one of these things. Oh, that would be amazing. It would be like having a boat. Slightly amusing. Renato had given up in the Sky Ripper's armature to save his friend Lapino. But without its armature, Sky Ripper's core was a deadly poison. A crafting bench. Renato wondered what he could make with it. Oh, 
hated warlocks. The way they stayed back and loved pain and death from a distance. Cowards. Really dangerous, effective cowards. around the room yelling, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's how we do it. <laughs> it was something he liked to do, but only after he'd killed all the witnesses. He's a psychopath. I mean, there are, there are some cool parts. I mean, this is a pretty environment. It's kind of cool. It's got all the gems and stuff all around. That's, that's cool. It's got its own style. It's like a, a storybook, you know. But I don't know. It doesn't really stand out as being like tremendously different. Okay, so the cool. observatory was a burning hulk. Dead scientists everywhere. Bernardo found the mad rabbit cowering under a desk. The ravens. They must have known we were coming, said Lapino. How did you... Well, you see, I was doing a card trick with my lucky deck, and I kind of bobbled the card, so I went under the desk to gather them up, and boom! I guess we'll have to take the car straight to the secret base. The secret rebel base. Yes. They had engineers there. But wait. Calaveras. The sage in the mountains. Maybe he would know what to do with the naked core. Ah, oh, decisions. Let's go. To this the core was killing him. He needed help. The sage Calaveras had given him the maps to find the armature and the core. If anyone knew the true name of the Transcendent Emperor, if anyone knew how to assemble the Sky Ripper, Calaveras did. If anyone could heal Renardo and render the core safe, at least to its bearer, surely it was he. Okay. Yeah, the story's kind of teensy bit hard to follow in that you don't really follow it. I don't really follow it. I mean, you're taking a thing. Well, there's a lot of choices. The base Anyways, of the mountain was the only safe I do place it. for landing. Just, nah. You would have to continue on foot. Muscles aching. Calaveras was a scholar, not a doctor. Could he really save Renardo from the poison radiating from the lost god's eye he was so recklessly carrying? Renardo wondered if his future self had commissioned these poles. survived. No one would write ballads about the fox whose knees ached forever, would they? Not unless he paid for it. He hated paying for publicity. So do I. Don't we just agree to disagree? Said Renato. No? thing
was chilling walking through the living mountains. There was always noise up ahead. Insects, birds, the croak and flutter of ravens arranging ambushes. But close by, there was only the breeze and the trickle of melting snow. As if every living thing was holding its breath for his poisonous burden to move on. So quick thing, I'm able to progress through this game pretty quickly. It's kind of cool. I mean, you're going through some really cool spots here in the game. Renato's paws were getting numb. Calaveras really didn't want company, did he? Yeah, we're in the mountains, so that makes sense. Go. People still use doorknobs. Time was running out for the rebellion. They might already be fighting the Imperial fleet. Everything hinged on Calaveras's ability to turn an exiled god's eye into something deadly. Sure. Right, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't need it. <laughs> no, I don't. It's just a professional interest. We've got much better prismatics than the old TE ever did. So Calaveras was an arcane engineer. He fussed at the core all day. He wrapped it with silver chains, and in front of it, he placed a huge round ruby so that it looked like a monstrous floating eye. Ah, so, what is it? I call it the Oculum. It's my very first death ray. And it won't poison me? Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. It's completely safe now. Anything I should watch out for? Yeah, tr try to avoid pointing at any mirrors. As he loaded the Oculum onto the Farfarer, Bernardo was a little concerned about Calaveras. People who were utterly sure of themselves he had found were either experts or horribly wrong. Or both. But Renardo only needed to fire the Oculum once. He only needed to destroy one ship. The Emperor's ship. And the war was over. Renardo plunged into the Imperial fleet. He felt the Oculum humming. He no longer felt sick. This was going to be fun. Or at least, it was going to be over. Interesting. Get to pilot the ship and shoot a bunch of things. That'd be kind of cool, but I don't know. This game is kind of not not exactly doing it for me. Renato resisted the temptation to fire the oculum until the time came. Sense its arcane energies, yearning to escape the sage's wrath, but. It wasn't eating him alive. So that was a plus. He felt good about himself. He'd saved a friend, he'd helped the rebels, he'd relied on himself, but he'd listened to others. He felt like the right sort of hero. Wise, yet decisive. Calaveras had been so sure it would work. Maybe he could fire it just a few times. No harm in that, right? But um, only when he absolutely needed to. So clearly there's a, there's a large enough skills thing. The portal was heavily guarded. Let's go someplace they really didn't want us to go.
Oh, okay. <laughs> he didn't load there for a second. He was practically sure he'd find something useful in one of these things. There were more pylons he could use the hook on. He needed to construct additional pylons. Make sure his sword was still working. Yep. Arb was getting tired. The core was no longer eating at him, but he still felt weak. His stamina was shot. But he had the oculum. When the raven swarmed him, it was sometimes fire its death ray. It seemed to be warming up too, firing more and more often. Maybe he should let it cool off. Yeah, he decided to stop using it entirely. Take a leap of faith, said the inscription. really not a hard game like it's it's really easy I'm almost kind of astounded by how easy it is so if you're looking for not so hard of a challenge like get this game you know? Anyway, he'd only to fire it one more time, and then he could chuck the whole contraption into the abyss. And the Emperor's ship was now in range. Renardo squinted. He could make out the line of ravens protecting the ship. Zenobia in front, conjuring. And on the deck, yes, that was his Imperial Majesty, pacing in his golden armor. Renardo lined up his shot. 
and fired. Caught in the beam, the ship burst into flames. The Ravens and Zenobia exploded. The Emperor, too, exploded. Renato waited for the beam to stop, but it only got brighter and the oculum hotter. Frantic, Renato pulled the oculum towards the abyss. The ruby burst into flames. The shiny metal casing glowed, then melted. That was good. Now the core could cool off, right? Renato ran. The blast incinerated him instantly, along with both fleets. The shockwave could be felt across all Erda. That winter, with neither empire nor rebels to rule them, the island slid into banditry. And so began the second age of darkness. Okay, that was weird. He could have sworn he'd just died. Instead, he was on the Farfarer, sailing away from Ubar. And it was still burning. He'd fled burning Ubar years ago, hadn't he? And now he was back there. Had all those years fighting the Empire been nothing but a vision into the future? A useful vision, if it was true. He learned something. The core was powerful, but dangerous if used improperly. Hmm. Okay, so this opens up uh, other story potentialities. So that's kind of cool. I had no idea. made bad choices but now when the real battle came he wouldn't make those choices he wouldn't make the same mistake twice the book's pages began to flip backwards towards the beginning and he realized that his adventure was just beginning the clouds parted over the isles of boreas it was time to choose the rebellion was in trouble Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renata knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong, but he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Emperor had brought the Sky Ripper pieces up out of ancient burial by his obscene rituals. Could this be where the Iblis Stone was hidden? Someone better get it before he does, thought Renato. On the other hand, his old friend Lepino needed rescuing. Lepino was no game changer, but huh. could Renato really leave an old friend to the Ravens? Okay, so that was like the original choice that I had with that storyline. So that means you could go back through and replay an entire storyline, make different choices with that storyline. That's pretty cool, actually. I'll give it credit. Um, there's a, that means there's a lot of varied options in the entire story, and you could see from that card listing that we had there too as well that it there's a lot of them. Um, so the varying differences between all that stuff makes it kind of a little bit more different than just a standard, um, you know, fighter top-down sort of game. So this could be cool. Uh, we'll have a larger review of this game later on this month after we've played it a little bit more and kind of parse through it a little bit so um this is pretty much it so uh this was stories the path of destinies uh playstation plus december free game so feel free to download that and see what you think uh feel free to comment this on uh on this on youtube and we're on gamesandgimmicks.com where you can check out our podcast too as well all right thanks very much and uh this is the poor ass gamer signing off